today we'll start a new topic with the basics of what is remote sensing so as you know that remote sensing is science of making interference about the object from measurements made a distance without coming into physical contact with the objects under the sensor so remote sensing is a science science because uh, if you are dealing with uh, earth resources you have to deal with water you have to deal with land you have to deal with forest you have to deal with natural resources so whenever you are talking about any resources that comprises of sand science and why it is called as arts because it's a art of map making where you have to prepare a different kinds of maps you have to prepare the directions you have to provide the scale you have to provide the legend so until is the maps are not clear you can cannot get a clear representation of the earth so whenever you want to see or have a information about any object i am seeing you you are seeing me is a best example of remote sensing because uh, without coming into physical contact with the object we are able to identify the various sort of object like which are uh, uh, human beings who is boy who is girl who is uh, what the different objects are because each and every signature is being stored in our mental computer and those processing by seeing the object we recall those processing objects and then we classify that into a particular organisms like if you see a dog if i see a cat how do we i recognize this is a dog or this is a cat because when we started our career or when we grown up our ancestors or our parents suggested us or taught us that what are the features of uh, uh, dog what are the features of cat and when such kind of features are resembling in nature without touching it without uh, feeling it by seeing it we can straight away see ki what are the various organisms in the same way the satellite which is at a very far distance from us gets the images of the real earth and on the basis of those images we classify the earth objects like each and every object has got a specific signature in the same way each and every earth feature has got a specific uh, characteristic so we have to identify those characteristics so uh, without going into the field the biggest advantage is if i want to have a real analysis of uh, glaciers in india the terrain is inaccessible so if i want to get the real information ki what was there in 1950 what is there in 2000 what is there in 2020 so if you want to see the historical change you can see from that and that is using electromagnetic radiation so what remote sensing does it stores it captures it processes the back scattered energy either that is electromagnetic radiation being reflected from the different earth objects or the self generated that is microwave satellites where we generate our own energy and the back scattered energy is being stored so then we can say that remote sensing can be classified into two methods one is or two uh, types of data sets you can say more precisely one is optical data sets and second one is microwave data set that is also locally known as active remote sensing so we'll be discussing more in detail in the coming slide so what does remote sensing means remote sensing means sensing of the earth surface from a space by making use of the properties of electromagnetic wave emitted reflected or diffracted by the sensed object for the purpose of improving natural resource management land resource and protection of the environment as i already stated that for example if somebody wants to do a real analysis of the forest fire affected area ki what is the area that has been affected by forest fire because again that is a inaccessible terrain there is no roads there is no railways connected and that is a very highly situated area at a widely elevated area so for the chain dynamics what is happening in any disaster can be easily obtained as well as you can see the transformation of land that has happened over the decades like what was the urbanization when uh, 
uh, in 1950, what was there in 1960, and then 70 onwards, you have got a satellite image. So you can have a real analysis of those features. Okay. So now you can see this is the best example that uh, there is uh, uh, two papaya trees. One is fully ripe, other one is not fully ripe. So how do we know which is fully ripe and which is not fully ripe? That is on the basis of color. In the same way, we do recognize and detect the various earth objects on the basis of various keys provided by remote sensing. That is uh, tone, texture, pattern, association, uh, location, texture. So on the basis of that, we'll be identifying an object. In the same way, by seeing the color, in the current example, we can say that ki which is fully ripe and which is not fully ripe. So this is the best example or the human beings are the best example where the on the basis of tone, we are identifying the various earth object in the same way in the satellite remote sensing also each and every object has got its own features and its own characteristics and will be identifying those features through it. Now, what and how this is totally done. So what is the visual perception? How we, the human beings are the best examples of remote sensing. So you can see that our head act as a platform in the same way the when we launch a satellite, that is the satellite is a platform and our eyes act as a sensor. In the same way, the various satellites launched by various countries like America, China, uh, Russia, European countries, India, they have got various sensors, like if we talk about Indian sensors more precisely and popular as uh, WIPS, Wildfield Scanner, then you have got AVIS Advanced Field Scanner, then you have got LEES 1, 2, 3, 4, Linear Imaging Self Scanning uh, Series. So the, what are these? These are the sensors and when we say IRS, IRS is the series of the satellites. Means what is the resource set, P6, these are the satellites in the same way if you go for the uh, American satellites, it will be Landsat. So Landsat is a satellite and under that uh, you will see that you have got various sensors like MSS, uh, then TM, ETM plus. So they are the, the various kinds of sensors. So what does, uh, so you can see that uh, the human being has got a satellite and sensor. In the same way the uh, remote sensing, the satellite has got sensors. Now how do we identify any object? We identify any object on the basis of its reflection or reflectance through sunlight. The sunlight emits the electromagnetic spectrum, electromagnetic radiation. We, the human being, sees only the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum that is blue, green and red. But the satellites has got the properties of capturing the entire spectrum ranging from blue, green, red, near infrared, middle infrared, thermal infrared, micro uh wave radiations the communication uh spectrum radiations so satellite has got all the property that it can detect so we uh, do identify the objects on the basis of the reflectance that is in the visible portion in the same way the satellite also identify the various of earth objects on the basis of its spectral response curve now, on the basis of the prior knowledge of any object, like I already stated that for identifying the current food, which is fully repent, which is not fully repent, we identify the uh, property that is color. In the same way, in the satellite also, each and every earth object has got different color, different texture, different pattern, different association, different geographical location. So all that has to be taken into consideration and on the basis of our prior knowledge, we'll be interpreting any earth object just like we have done in case of a fruit. Now, how to increase the food grain supply? Because the our population is increasing and the demand of agriculture is also increasing. So you need information about all the prospect that is attached to the agriculture conservation like what is the present status of the agriculture area that is under cultivation, what are the land use pattern, 
that whether the over the year whether the land use pattern is same or it is changing then because king, there is an increase in the demand that's why we have to look for other alternative of uh, lands that are unutilized and that can be brought onto cultivation they are arable wastelands with minimum mitigation measures we can brought them into cultivation for the development and conservation of soil uh, and uh, increase in the production so that is how it uh, helps apart from that it also gives a decision support system to on the real time analysis we can get uh, information about for example what is the total amount of agriculture that in a particular district or in uh, uh, country as a whole we have done for in case of potatoes or onions what is the total number of demand and how much we are going to produce if the demand uh, is less and the production is high we know ki how much ample amount of excessive food grain is available with us so that excessive food grain can be easily transported and can be easily exported to the foreign country in the same way if we see that there is a lesser number of production being done for a particular food grain so we can get that import from foreign country so that is provides a decision support system before any things happens so that is the biggest advantage and that control helps in controlling the pricing of the product because if there will be abnormal a change in a uh, demand will be more and supply is less then black marketing corruptions will be started so the government can act accordingly and can prepare accordingly then this subject also provides you the uh, definition and the decision related to the yield production ki what is the total amount of yield that we are going to produce in the current uh year and what are the agriculture practices that has to be modified according to the new technology and the demand so that we can have the maximum production with limited damage to the nature with maximum water conservation strategies and that will help the productivity of the land and finally all the yield production and the various kinds of secondary data can be drawn together for the social and economical development of any age so by imaging from space because when you see that uh, that the satellite is at 800 km away from us and you can see that the satellite can provide you a very large coverage of uh, the earth so uh, without going into the field we can have a real understanding of the earth of a larger area if uh, you can go then by seeing this you can classify remote sensing into platforms remote sensing platforms into three categories that is ground born then you have got air born and the third one is space born for the satellite what we are talking about so ground born are those sensors that are important in any building or any ground and that provides local knowledge for regional knowledge uh, you need airborne uh, sensors uh, right now most probably or knowing drones nowadays are more popular for use so we are using drones for getting a more localized information and if you want to have a larger uh, information for a specific area then you can have a satellite imaging so this satellite images provides a synoptic overview of the area so we the human being if i am uh, standing somewhere i can hardly see 200 meters or 500 meters of an object and their characteristics but when the satellite provides you a large overview of the area you can have a real understanding of the land transportation and the land land transformation that has happened over the decades so you can see that there are various kinds of satellite uh, available one is sun synchronous satellites and the other one is weather forecasting satellites so delhi in the television you will see that uh, there comes a uh, weather forecasting report that today or tomorrow there is going to be a heavy rainfall and then a reporters come and shows a image where dense clouds is there then they will say that there is a possibility of high rainfall 
so those rainfall and uh, those data sets when it is related to weather forecasting they are known as geostationary satellites and all the natural resource management with the multi temporal data sets is required will be requiring a sun synchronous satellite so that that is a polar orbit satellite so you can see that how this uh, entire world has been covered by various satellites has been uh, demarcated into various zones and throughout the year throughout the day we get a repetitive coverage of the entire world and we can have a multi temporal multi date multi uh, objective analysis as we have got a big coverage ranging from the entire asia europe each and every periphery is covered so you can see that this has been divided into various rows columns and you have got various difference of degrees where the satellites are stationed so these are known as orbits and uh, the satellite moves through those orbits so that they provide a continuous information of those features on the earth so this is the you can see the entire mechanism where you can see that uh, the entire remote sensing principles you can say you can also say precisely principles of remote sensing or mechanism of remote sensing so how it starts will uh, know it diagrammatically that sun emits electromagnetic radiation so what it will do it will come and will interact with the earth surface but in between the sunlight and earth surface there is a atmosphere so maybe many of the disastrous or harmful uh, radiations won't be reaching to the earth surface but they will be returning back to the uh, atmosphere so that uh, that doesn't reach to the earth surface because they are dangerous to life and there is a layer that uh, does a such kind of uh, filtering that is known as ozone layer and in between there is a channel through which the electromagnetic radiation penetrates the atmosphere and interacts with the all surface the window through which the electromagnetic radiation passes and interacts to the all surface that is known as atmospheric window and atmosphere is the so i can say sun is a source of illumination b it will be uh, interacting with the atmosphere so there three things will happen one is back scattered some of the energy will be scattered back some of the energy will be stored or maybe absorbed and some will be emitted downwards toward the earth surface so those emitted downwards towards the earth surface will re, uh, will be reflected will be reflected against towards the atmosphere and again it will pass through the atmosphere and will be recorded in the sensor and then the sensor will record each and every information of the earth surface whether that is land whether that is forest whether that is settlement whether that is wasteland all the properties are being recorded and then the sensor or the platform or the satellite will record and will relay this data will be transmitted to the data reception and recording station what will happen once the data is recorded by the satellite it will send to the data reception and data recording it is located in india in nrsc and space application center where all the data is are recorded and then this data sets are converted into digital data formats either it can be in the form of hard copy or it can be form of a digital copy depending of, on your objective you will be converting it ki whether that is a hard or whether it is a soft and finally we will be doing various kinds of image analysis either it can be through visual classification or it can be using digital classification so visually when we are going it will be using the various uh, interpretation keys like tone texture association pattern and digital image processing that we are already stating and studying that will be doing the various kinds of radiometric and geometric corrections thereafter we will be uh, doing the image enhancement filtering and finally we will be classifying the satellite image and then we will be providing that uh, reports in the form of maps in the form of tables will be sent to the organization 
and to the decision makers so that the decision makers can have a real understanding of the or surface key what are the changes that are happening and what the prime focus or the thrust area should be and then they will be discussing it they will be planning it with the government so that we can have a better world and a better human life to each and every person who is living on the earth so again i have already stated that you have got two types of remote sensing sensors or types of remote sensing one is passive remote sensing other one is active remote sensing so passive remote sensing depends on imaging and sounding active also in imaging and sounding the only difference is here in passive remote sensing the source of energy is electromagnetic radiation but in case of active remote sensing the source of radiation is uh, created by uh, our cell by sensors and then the back scattered energy is being recorded so the lidar the radar uh, the sar are the best example of active remote sensing and for passive all the satellite sensor what i have already stated will be the best example for it so you can see that how this uh, source of energy is being reflected and uh, you the best advantage of remote sensing and gis that each and every object we have differently in different spectral band so what we trying to do is we want to have the real information of each and every uh, object in various bands and on the basis of those we'll be classifying the object i've already stated about atmospheric window is the channel through which the electromagnetic is allowed to enter into the earth surface so you can see that it started from uh, ultraviolet red visible red infrared red in, in infrared you have got two kinds of uh, radiations that are being recorded one is reflected ir then you have got thermal ir then you have got microwaves then you have got radio waves so all this radio channels in uv you have got ionization and decaussation in uh, visible range you have got uh, electronic transmission then in infrared you have got uh, vibrational transitions and then in far infrared you have got rotational transitions in microwave you have got formidable transition so these are the various channels through which 0.4 to 1.3 1.5 to 1.8 2.2 to 2.6 3 to 3.6 4.2 to 5 7 to 15 1 cm to 6 cm so this is the range through which the radiation is allowed to enter into the earth surface so this is called as atmospheric window just like a window if i blow a torch and there is a wall and there is a window in the wall the if the, the light will be uh, focused on it will be back scattered it won't penetrate uh, through that wall but if i pass it through a window it can easily go on in the same way it happens in the atmosphere so you can see that i have already stated that each and every object has got a, a different spectral curve in different bands so you can see that the major features of the earth has been recorded and their spatial response curve is created so you can see that the water uh, is there then vegetation is there then soil is there but the, you see that there is a big difference in the response in various wavelength ranges so it starts from 0.8 and ends up into 4.8 micrometers so you can see that in each and every band the objects are dif uh, behaving differently so why it is it is because of the difference in the properties so the remote sensing takes the advantage of the difference in properties of each and every earth feature to identify the various earth objects so if today i want to identify a deep water and a shallow water you can see that he how the color difference of a water and reflectance of a deep water is uh, low and shallow water is high so on the basis of the reflectance i can state about the water quality its depth its contamination 
in the same way we can see about the vegetation type also if you prepare for different types of forest or different types of plantation each and every forest has got different kinds of leaves each and every leaves has got different kinds of layers and chlorophyll content and on the basis of that each and every plant will behave differently because we have got a prior knowledge of the reflectance of those plants on a particular spectral band we'll be identifying those plants you can say that uh, you see that in an infrared band the vegetation has the highest reflectance if you compare with the other earth objects so we in the same way for the water and the soil that's why we always try to keep infrared band into consideration because in those bands the difference between the various earth object is very high and very prominent whereas you compare in the visible portion that is 0.4 to 0.7 the difference is quite less and maybe you can get confused with the various earth object but when you compare that with the uh, infrared band the uh, difference is very high so you can see that ke how the different earth objects are behaving differently and each and every object each and every satellite records these objects in the form of different bands so you can see that uh, this is the example where the data has been recorded in green band red band near infrared band short wave infrared band the range is 0.4 to 0.594 green band for blue band it's 0.4 to 0.5 for red band 0.62 to 0.67 near infrared band 0.7 to 0.86 short wave to 1.5 to 1. Point Seven five uh, micrometer. So you can see that ki how the various Earth objects behave differently, and we'll be identifying those properties of the Earth objects to get a clear understanding of the various features, whether that is a fresh snow or green vegetation or a, a dark toned soil or a light toned soil. All will depend on this. In the same way, you can see that when we are talking about uh, colors, so you have got three primary colors, that is blue, green, and red. And on the basis of this, the other subtractive colors are uh, generated, that is yellow. Yellow is red uh, minus green. So that creates yellow. When there is a blue and uh, minus red, that gives uh, you blue minus red uh, uh, magnenta and then cyan color minus red if you compare that blue and green that is magnet so on the basis of this you can say three primary colors are there that is blue green and red and thereafter you have got other colors like uh, yellow magnet and cyan where those colors will be taken into consideration for identification of the various earth objects so you can see that this is a satellite image showing the various earth feature on the left hand side that is a natural color means real color what you see on the ground is reflected in this uh, satellite image but we generally use because each and every country uh, we want to have the maximum uh, properties or the band properties where the various earth objects can be differentiated differentially so in order to make that happen we create a standard false color composite that is a false color means that is not a true color a true color will be natural color so we do assign false color because in the visible portion or uh, the software or the screen of display we have got uh, three guns to which this entire band is passed that is blue green and red and through that we have to create a standard false color where the uh, importance of all the bands has to be taken into consideration so that we can have a maximum representation and differentiation of the various earth feature. So by creating a standard false color, we see that the various earth objects are prominently differentiated if I do uh, with various band combinations. So signatures, you have already, uh, we have stated that Key to feature identification from space imagery depends on the characteristic change in the properties of electromagnetic spectrum reflected or omitted from the target that is known as signature that we are talking about. 
so signature could not be interfered through the spectral variations polarization change thermal inertia temporal variation so signatures are not completely deterministic but they are statistical in nature with mean and dispersion so you can see that how in different bands the different earth object behave differently so you can see in green uh, gray level values how the crop water and barren occupy whatever portion in the land then uh, you have got uh, in the histogram how it sees that so you will see that in each and every band the various earth object behave differently so if we do create a explanatory plotter of this versus the third versus fourth band you can see that the differentiation between the water barren and crop is very easy to be identified in the same way if we uh, do it for band 4 the variation is very high so that's why we do keep this band combinations into consideration for creation of the art object and finally each and every image is recorded in the form of pixel pixel means the smallest unit of the image and it contains a number that is known as a digital number on which this digital represents the earth object what it has been saved so if you see that the same thing uh, if you zoom it you will be seeing in a pixel form but in general you will be seeing that how the forest is seen how the barren land is seen how the various kinds of water and plants are seen so the information depends on the resolutions so we have done with what is remote sensing then we have done with spectral uh, response curve then we have done with electromagnetic spectro then we have done with different kinds of satellite then we have done with various kinds of uh, sensors active passive then we have done with various kinds of platforms whether that is a ground bone platform or a space bone or a air bone platform in the same way when we are talking about remote sensing we have got four types of resolution the resolutions are spatial spectral radiometric and temporal so what does spatial resolution means is the ability of a sa satellite or a sensor to differentiate two different earth objects means uh, if the resolution is high means if you compare in the current image like you have got 5.8 is a high resolution image and 360 meter is a coarse resolution so what does it does in high resolution the amount of information the amount of details of the object will be very high but the coverage will be low in the same way if you compare that with the coarse resolution the amount of coverage is high but the amount of information is less detail information is less so in the same way you can see that uh, if you have got a spatial resolution of 360 meters if you zoom it there is a big pixel size uh, under that again you zoom it of uh, wide field scanner that is 188 meter that is if you zoom it that is into pixels then you have got least one that is 72 meter again you are getting a refinement then you have got 36 meters of least two uh that again the amount of information is increasing then you have got 23 meter for uh least three again the amount of information is increasing the details is increasing and we again if you go for 4.8 uh, irs pc pan pan chromatic that is a blank black and white image you'll get a higher resolution a higher information so depending on your objective depending on your resource depending on your task you will be selecting the satellite image for example uh, if uh, you are working on a smart city for a, a specific uh, a township like chandigarh if you go it is a well planned township you want to make new chandigarh throughout india in a planned way so what you have to do you have to create a smart city so how it will be created for that you will be needing a high resolution satellite image so there then will be procuring a high resolution that is a 5.8 meter but if my only objective is to get it done 
for the forest cover mapping what is the forest change and all for that portion this high resolution is not so required you can have a clear uh, coarser resolution of at uh, least three where you can have a real analysis of the various earth feature because uh, this satellite data whenever you are talking about are too costly in nature so that will uh, have a big difference in the total project cost like if the project cost uh, is 1 crore rupees for a high resolution the same cost will be 10 lakh rupees for your forest identification so at least 90 lakh of fund you have saved either for the government or for your company so depending on your objective you will be classifying it so you see this is a panchromatic image where the earth features can be easily modified so you can see the various transportation road railway airport uh, then uh, various kinds of settlement area forested area vegetated area agricultural area industries all the area all the information can be easily obtained we are we are not going into the field but we can see all the features sitting on our computer and what the change has happened over the decade at the particular place can be easily modeled up so this will make you more clearer okay, how the applications that is a one kilometer uh, if you want to have a regional understanding you will be using a one kilometer if the more detailed analysis required you will be using 360 meters and more detail you will be using 188 meters so depending on your objective you can see that how the resolution is changing the amount of information is changing and the features are more getting more clear in nature so this means the scales are varying the scales are a different scale if you compare it with a satellite image so generally when we are talking about uh, spectrum we are talking about green red green blue green red that is the visible portion of the electromagnetic spectrum we the human being sees only this spectrum but uh, electromagnetic spectrum sun and lights also reflect uh, thermal energy that is near infrared short wave infrared middle wave infrared and uh, low wave infrared so low wave infrared is one kind of wide wave spectrum then midi is multi spectral several to 10 of bands and high is hyper spectral 100 of nanobands so you can see that uh, uh, you will have a black and white image in case of a uh, band chromatic image that will be a single band image multi spectral is a middle resolution you will have a multi channel image and in hyper spectral in the same bands you can see thousands of bands so as the amount of bands are increasing the amount of information is increasing so here prior to this we were focused on the shape and size that is the spatial resolution but not only we have to see for the spatial resolution we have to also check for the spectral resolution so spectral resolution is a very important parameter for identification and classification of the object so as per the requirement of your object you will be selecting a panchromatic a multi-spectral and hyperspectral like for hyper if you are going for mineral exploration or rock, rock exploration the amount of information is very in detail so for that you will be needing a hyperspectral and for general land use land cover forestry and the other regional features you can use multi-spectral and for high resolution you will be using the panchromatic data set so you can see that how the different earth objects or the soil behave differently in the uh, multi-spectral channels so uh, this is the stereo pair that we have generated using the satellite images these are some of the satellites so what are the applications of remote sensing the applications of remote sensing are to identify the category to which the land surface is expressed belongs to based on signature difference so we'll be identifying the earth object on the basis of that okay then you have got the surficial expressions are indicators of certain resources which are not directly absorbed by remote sensing so many times if you want to go for exploration like uh, each and every resources mineral resources are still unexplored 
are skin covered by various or features of the earth surface so using remote sensing and satellite data we have to identify the new resources because our demand is increasing so not only we have to see the overall uh, changes that is happening in that area but we have to also see for the changes that will happen in new futures because we want to have a sustainability uh, uh, in our life in our resources so that those resources we don't consume it in the current generation and we want to preserve and protect it so that our future generation can come can see and can witness those resources otherwise it will happen just like endangered species that many of the species has vanished from this world because of human influence so you can see that how satellite images over the decade by seeing it you can identify the changes in the forest cover in that area so you can see that how the entire forest has been previously in 1983 the red color denotes uh, the forested area so you see the same feature in 1983 of the same area and then you th see that in 2002 so you can see that what amount of damage we have done to the resource that is our forest resource entire area is deforested means there is a big amount of loss of not only uh, the flora fauna both is affected the animals too are affected and that's why you will feel that and nowadays a lot of uh, news are coming up that leopards have attacked the villages or they are roaming around in the cities because you have cut down the entire forest the forest land is freezing and their coverage their food is reducing so they are bound to go of the, the forest for their food for water so we have to have our sustainability so that our resources doesn't get vanished up in this entire operations so this is all that we have to do for uh, today so we have completed up with a topic that is based on remote sensing and gis so uh, when we are talking about remote sensing and gis we are talking about uh, active sensor we are talking about passive sensor we are talking about uh, spectral resolution we are talking about spatial resolution then we have to see the temporal resolution so the changes what we have seen in the satellite images that was in 1982 and 2002 was because of the temporal resolution of the satellite that gives us the liberty that gives us the freedom to have a real kind change dynamic analysis at any particular region like if you want to go for any water harvesting or conservation site what you have to do you have to look for the possible sites where you can go for the uh, artificial recharge sites so for that you have to map the all the resources so when we are talking about any resource when we are talking about water resource it cannot be directly de dependent on one feature so we have to see the rainfall pattern ki what is the rainfall pattern in that area then we have to see the underground water condition of that area ki what is the underground water condition in that area then you have to look for the geology ki whether the terrain is a hard rock terrain or a soft rock terrain then whether the rock types are sedimentary in nature metamorphic in nature or igneous in nature then you will be seeing the various land use land cover in that area land use uh, corresponds to all the activities that we do on the land and land cover is all the features that are natural in nature like forest water rocks are, are classified under land cover and land use means all the practices that we are doing like agriculture like construction will be uh, categorized under the category land use so we'll be taking all this parameter then we'll be seeing the underground water table of that area ki what is the underground water table during pre monsoon post monsoon we'll be evaluating that then we'll be seeing the amount of uh, yield that is required for a particular kind of uh, 
uh, research or agriculture that has to be done then we have to look for the water budgeting ki what is the total amount of water coming to a particular basin how much water is going as a run off so we have to have a balance between all this feature and then we'll be overlaying this because when we talk about remote sensing when we talk about gis when we talk about gps they are all connected to each other because the remote sensing provides the data of the earth the gis is used to map those data sets okay of the earth and uh, uh, gps is very important for verification for verification that is global positioning system because you have to whatever things that you have mapped uh, on a satellite image have or using satellite image through gis the validity has to be validated and for that in field you have to go how would i know where you have taken what was the point what was the accuracy so nowadays uh, field verification is very important for getting your data validated and at last you have got a radiometric resolution that denotes to the uh, emissivity in of the objects in various bands that denotes means the amount of data that is recorded like amount of color that is available with us to identify the different earth objects like if i've got a 4 bit data if i've got a 8 bit data if i've got 4 bit data it will be near about 32 colors we can differentiate and if i've got a 8 bit data i've got 255 colors between black and white i can differentiate where zero denotes towards the black color and 255 denotes towards the white color so if i talk about ratio metric resolution of 8 bit data versus 4 bit data i'll always find that the 8 bit data has given us a better interpretation quality in the image the boundaries the features are easily identified and if you compare that with the lower bit data sets so this is all about that you have to do the basics of remote sensing the topic we have covered today with this i'll end my class and we'll have a 10 minute of uh, question and answer quiz and thereafter we'll end the class so with this i'll end my lecture